Good morning and welcome. This is Sandra Hess, founder of DTC Wine Workshops, and I am excited to introduce Melissa Leiter, a new member of the DTC Consultant Network, who's going to share tips and tricks for inbound marketing in this introductory webinar. So without further ado, let's turn it over to Melissa. Sandra, and thank you so much for this opportunity to be part of the DTC network. I'm really looking forward to getting to know some of you and chatting with you all more. Uh, like Sandra said, I have a background in inbound marketing. Uh, I started as a social media marketing consultant about six years ago or so, uh, and then grew my experience into learning more of inbound, which when we say inbound encompasses everything that kind of attracts people to you versus you pushing out messages to them. So we think of SEO, website optimization, email marketing, social media marketing, and kind of engaging our community in those areas. Um, I've been in San Francisco for a little over five years now, and I work with a lot of different companies here in the city, but in kind of recreationally going up to Napa and Sonoma to visit wineries there, I really connected with some of the smaller wineries that have a very uh, small business feel to them. I grew up in mid coast Maine in a very small town. So I'm very familiar with small to medium sized businesses and the struggles kind of those business owners have. And so I really related to that and also really enjoyed those wine tasting experiences. So wanted to combine kind of my passion for that, uh, with my knowledge of inbound marketing. So from there, I started new vines marketing where a small consultant group that kind of fills in the gaps for small to mid sized wineries where they need it. Um, moving on, uh, these are kind of, this is kind of my process for working with marketing for small to mid-sized wineries. Uh, the first being kind of sitting down with the winery owner and determining what their business and marketing objectives are. Uh, and that, that's different for every, I think, small to mid-sized winery. I think the number one one is obviously to sell more wine, but, uh, how people want to do that is different from winery to winery. Uh, so the next thing we do is kind of sit down and talk about, you know, what what resources are you willing to dedicate to this marketing process? Do you have, you know, extra staff on hand that could help implement a social media strategy in a couple hours a week or help segment your email marketing list and send out more emails? Or do you have a budget that you're willing to dedicate to allocating to outsource marketing resources. So from there, we kind of come up with a strategy that makes the most sense to achieve those marketing businesses, uh, mark, business objectives and marketing objectives. And then from there, we implement those strategies and then analyze those strategies, look what's working, what's not working, uh, and then kind of either go back to the drawing board or keep fine tuning what we're working on. And the ways in which I do that is coming up with strategies, kind of utilizing all of these different things. And it depends, again, on those resources that you're willing to dedicate to your marketing cause. But uh, a lot of places we'll start is SEO. So how do you kind of attract people to your website or how do you get people to find out about your website? That can have a strategy that encompasses a lot of different things from blogging to content offers to working with uh, other websites to get backlinks back to your website. Um, the, another part of that is getting people to your winery is in PR and referral traffic. And so we'll do kind of outsourced, um, you know, PR pitching, whether it's to smaller blogs or specific, you know, regional areas of people that are looking uh, for wineries to visit in your area. Um, referral traffic is also big where if you're working with you know, say a, a bigger uh, tourism group or something that can, can point people to your winery. Another way we can do that is, of course, advertising, whether that's online, you know, on Facebook or doing Google AdWords or things like that. Um, and then once you get people to the winery, you really want to capitalize on that tasting room traffic. And this is where I work with a lot of tasting room staff and on doing some training where, it's, where we talk about what are the best ways to get people engaged, whether that's, you know, signing up for the wine club or at the very least just getting someone's email address so that you can continue to market to them and kind of continue to remind them about that tasting room experience they had. Uh, and of course, if we can get them in the wine club, you know, how do you make them feel very special and part of a community about being in that wine club so that they stay in that wine club and that you get those recurring sales you know, year over year. Email marketing is a huge part of that. 
uh, segmenting out all of those different lists, whether they're in the wine club, whether they've just visited you once, whether they've signed up on your website to get a newsletter but have never visited you at all. Uh, you know, what are those messages that you send out via email and how do you kind of capitalize on engaging those people to get them back into your tasting room or at least purchasing more wine. Uh, and then also using social media to do a bit of the same and kind of recreating that tasting room experience. You know, a lot of the things that kind of last with people are the experience that they have when tasting wine uh, at your winery or in your tasting room and how do you help kind of recreate that for them at all times. And social media can become a huge big player in that. Some of the experience I have in this specific space uh, is working with Kastrucci Wineries. They're a small wine winery up in Napa Valley. Um, they came to me about a year and a half, two years ago, and, and really wanted to kind of capitalize on the online world. They had a website that was, I think, two or three pages and very outdated. They didn't have any social media um, and they weren't doing any kind of outreach through an email marketing program. So they came to me and we helped develop all of those strategies and we also did a website redesign uh, and we went ahead and implemented those and I'm still working with Castrucci today to uh, reach those customers. Some stats and highlights from that is growing our Instagram followers by 71%. Today we are at 8,481 followers. Uh, they didn't have an Instagram following when we started, so that's great. Um, we've also been able to really capitalize on Twitter and grow our follower base there, but also get people who, who have who are looking for wineries in the Napa area or looking to kind of just like following hashtags around wine or things like that. And that's driven a lot of traffic to the website from Twitter. We've gotten a couple of different reporters actually to write stories, uh, reporters from small blogs online to write stories about Castrucci because they found us on Twitter. So that's become a really useful tool for getting more engagement that way as well. Uh, in addition, we send out very targeted email newsletters. Uh, not just newsletters, but we send out very specific emails to the different wine club members so that we're able to kind of maintain a really good message that's targeted to a very specific audience. So we're able to get a very high open rate and a very high click through rate, um, well above the industry average for them. And again, this is kind of referencing some of those Twitter conversations we've had with different customers that have gotten people who originally wouldn't have ever heard of Castrucci, not only to hear about Castrucci and kind of follow us on Twitter, but also to get up to the tasting room there. So that's been very helpful. And this is a quick little snapshot of their new website here. It's a website that we built on Squarespace, which is a very easy to manage website so that anytime we want to add something new or put new updates or change anything, it's very easy for us to do so, uh, which is a huge, huge relief, I think, for a lot of small to mid-sized business owners who maybe have built a website several years ago and used a bigger company and it was a very expensive project, but when they need changes now, they still have to go through a consultant or pay for a couple of hours for a couple of changes and it just becomes a process that's very complicated and often very expensive and strenuous for small to mid-sized business owners. So that's why we worked with a platform like Squarespace so that either Don or Dave or myself can go in and make updates very quickly to the website to make sure that we're communicating the right message to our audience. Another group I have worked with is kind of entirely different than the winery taste, the wine room tasting experience. Um, and that's Invine, and Invine was an all-in-one beverage platform that different restaurants and uh, other eateries decided to use. It, it's basically an iPad wine menu, uh, so they're definitely a software company, which is a, different, a definitely different space, but we're seeing a lot more B2B wine software platforms come up like this that are trying to either work with wineries or work with restaurants to kind of help sell more wine. Um, so with Invine, we came up with an overall inbound marketing strategy 
and I would fill in the gaps in that strategy where they didn't have team members that could implement other parts of that strategy. So those gaps that I filled were kind of managing their online advertising, managing their content creation, managing their email marketing, doing a lot of public relations outreach for them, uh, and then also developing their social strategy. And then we had an intern to implement that strategy. So you can see, you know, company to company, how I work with these uh, business owners is very different and it's very much unique to what their immediate needs are for their marketing objectives or business objectives. With Invine, some of the, the highlights for that were increasing lead generation for their sales team by 15%, which was really helpful because their sales team was getting very burnt out on just doing constant outbound cold calling. Um, so that put some, gave them some relief. Um, and then we were also featured in two very specific industry publications, which got them a lot of uh, website traffic, which was very beneficial. Two very different case studies and success stories of how I've worked with people in the wine space. Uh, Sandra, I'll turn it back over to you. what is the proper mix of touch points? How often should a winery team be emailing both the club member segment versus the first time visitor segment? So would you like to maybe give us some of your insights there? Sorry, you, you broke up a little there, Sandra. How often should you be emailing? Yes, the question your was, is that how, the question? Yes, how often should a winery team be emailing their club member audience and then the second question would be take that same you know scenario for a first time visitor who's just opted in sure absolutely so the first key step to that i think is to make sure that your email marketing lists are segmented and i always advise people segment your list as much as possible because you can always go back and group lists and send the same email to several different lists mm -hmm. but the more you can segment those list the better you can make your targeted messages and so from there i would say coming up with different emails email marketing strategies or different types of email content for each of those audiences and then the number one thing to look for is just your unsubscribe rate because people get really nervous about that they say you know oh i'm emailing this person like way too much we can only send them an email once well look at your unsubscribe rate and if you're sending them an email you know once a week and you still have like a uh, 0 0.2 percent unsubscribe rate you're you're emailing them an okay amount people aren't getting annoyed with you because they're still opening well that's the other thing looking at your open and your click-through rates and if people are opening your emails clicking through and not unsubscribing then you're communicating with them messages that they're actually interested in seeing so that that comes back to kind of the uh, my approach that I talked about in the beginning where it's you know you create this strategy you implement it and then you analyze it and see what's working. If you're getting a high unsubscribe rate, then maybe back off on sending some of those emails. Gotcha. That's wonderful advice. You know, do correlate uh, the success of email marketing campaigns with um, analytics. I mean, look at the uh, bounce rates, look at the unsubscribe rates, and if there is a direct correlation, obviously adjust as needed. So wonderful advice there. The next question always goes into, you know, how can we get more opt-in information from our uh, you know visitors our super fans and in some cases we're seeing a trend recently where let's just take a la crema for the for you know an example today where they've got a wonderful national audience a national following who just loves their buttery chardonnays who's purchasing a lot of times at the grocery store but also maybe visiting the website to stay up to date on latest recipe pairing ideas etc so how do you suggest that winery teams do a better job getting people to opt in both through the website as well as at the tasting room. Sure, absolutely. And obviously, uh, La Crema is a bigger brand <laughs> there. And so I think when you're working with smaller to mid-sized wineries, there's a lot of different ways you can get people to do that. Uh, on the website, one thing I always say to do is to have a pop-up. Uh, some people get really hesitant to do that and are like, well, that's kind of annoying. I don't necessarily want that on my website. 
and I understand that, but there are ways that you can have that pop up there where it's not as obnoxious or as annoying for visitors. You can add rules. For example, one of those rules is called like the opt out rule. You don't see the pop up until you actually go to hit the exit box from uh, uh, the browser window that you're on. Um, Privy, this is a great tool to use that. And so you can kind of change all of those different, uh, different timing mechanisms and again I always suggest a B test them which you know which ones are converting better which ones are not converting um, but then the other key is in what your offer is so I think a really good good way to capitalize on getting people into the tasting room because my my theory is that I want to focus everything around that kind of tasting room experience because I think that experience is really special and I think that is what creates kind of lifetime wine buyers so kind of having that be the main goal when someone visits your website, okay, what can this pop-up message be to incentivize them to come to the tasting room? So what I often suggest doing is, you know, giving 10% off a tasting fee or, you know, if they sign up doing a two for one tasting the next time they come in and giving them an offer code or, so, or something. Um, there's different ways, you know, management wise that works for everyone, but incentivizing them in that way to come into the tasting room, I think is a great way. Uh, to do that on your website and then in terms of getting uh, tasting or getting email signups in the tasting room I think that there's a lot of different clever ways you can do that whether it's with you know having cards that people can fill out uh, there's a lot of POS systems out there now that have a potential uh, fill out form at the bottom of your receipt so if someone buys something from you they can put their email address in there to keep updated or get or even don't even offer receipts and just say okay we'll email you a receipt you know and then you get their email address right away that way mm -hmm. um, but it really depends on again especially for those small to mid-sized wineries what kind of tools you're working with maybe your POS, POS system doesn't have that and you don't have the potential to invest in a POS system that allows you to do that so it's just kind of getting creative and training your training room staff on you know don't let this person leave until we get their email address. Whether that's like with a raffle sign up or something, obviously you don't want to get too aggressive with that, but becoming coming up with creative ways that your tasting room staff can get that email address so that they're not leaving the tasting room without it. Wonderful tips. And I, I really appreciate the fact that, you know, you bring up some solutions like Privy where, you know, you're talking about customizing the invitation to opt in instead of having a standard stagnant, you know, join our newsletter list. And this is kind of a pet peeve that I have. And it's, you know, most avid wine enthusiasts who are members of a club are members of five or more clubs consecutively. So they're already getting, you know, five e-newsletters every month from their favorite wine brands. I doubt they want to receive a sixth or seventh or eighth. And so I think, you know, the old way of just that standard join our, our newsletter list is just not working. So providing that custom pop up that's really meaningful based on the audience I think is everything. Um, when it comes to you know this big idea of social media campaigns, social media management, social media strategy, there's a lot of speculation still in the wine industry about you know the effort uh, required versus the the return. And so um, any tips and tricks that you would share with us about the platforms that you find most effective when investing time and energy? Sure, absolutely. Uh, I think that the biggest thing with social media is one, knowing where your audience is. And I think for most wineries, a huge, huge portion of their audiences are on Facebook and Instagram and maybe Twitter. Uh, and using those platforms to the best of your ability is very important. Uh, I actually have a blog post, Sandra, that I'll share with you that maybe we could share with the audience. Um, that's how to do social media for your winery in two hours a week or less. Right. Because I think it's important that you don't get overly <laughs> carried away with it. Uh, I think the most important thing is that you're not posting just to post. And I think that's the biggest mistake that I see most brands, all brands, um, and actually bigger brands are typically worse with it, where they just post content on social media mm -hmm. for the sake of, oh, we need to be on social media, we need to be posting these messages here. I think the most important thing is understanding your audience. You know, are you a small to mid-sized winery that targets millennials more? Uh, or do you have an audience that's, you know, 50 plus? Uh, and, and that's the generation. Um, I think 
most people are on some type of social media platform, whether that is Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. So understanding who your audience is, one, where they are, and then two, or three, not posting just a post and actually having conversations with these people and actually asking for their feedback. Uh, you know, and and actually making them feel like they're part of your immediate community, you know, and saying, hey, we're trying, like, for example, you could do something like we're trying to decide between these two labels or, you know, these two event or themes for our next upcoming event, you know, what, what would you like to see? What do you care? Why do you like one more than the other? Mm -hmm. um, and just feeling, making these people feel that they're really engaged and not just saying, oh, here's another picture from another tasting <laughs> at our winery. Like they know, they know that, but maybe instead sharing a picture of, you know, a special bachelorette party and like talking about something very like sentimental that happened at that party or and like how that how someone else can come to your winery and have that same experience um and just making it more engaging more targeted uh whenever you post anything excellent so for those of you who have just joined um, the question posed to melissa was really around you know investment in time within social media um you know platforms and she has a wonderful blog post that i will share as a recap uh, for those of you um, who will be subscribing to my monthly newsletter that goes out tomorrow, the recording will be available there. So we will make sure to post her uh, her blog piece on how to do social media for your winery in two hours or less. And so what I'm hearing is a couple of things. One, do become interactive and do recognize your social fans. That's the best investment of time in social media. But also um, so have some fun with it. Um, so it sounds like instead of you know overkilling it with too much of the same information because we need to post, really make it unique, make it creative, make it interactive. Great. Absolutely. All right. So as you wrap up in today's intro webinar featuring Melissa Leiter, we're just so excited to hear about her best practices, her case studies supporting small to mid-sized wineries in all areas of social media and email marketing strategy and management. As I mentioned earlier, Melissa really enjoys a training winery teams also on how to build a foundation, but also to take it, run with it, and manage it on a day-to-day. -day. So if you find that you're in need of some extra help, I do encourage you following today's webinar to reach out to Melissa workshop calendar tab and do a search against top three marketing tools for creating lifetime wine buyers. You will find that she has four dates coming up in 2017. The first taking place July 20th from 10 to 11.30 a.m. online. Um, so it's a great way to get interactive, to get hands-on um, information as well as a checklist. There are two Q&A periods as well. You'll find all details for registrating, registra uh, registering for any of these events uh, here. The online workshops are a great way to not only to connect but also leave that workshop uh, excited and motivated with the tools needed that you can share with your teams about how to implement some best practices around marketing for your small to mid-sized wine brand. And so uh, another way to get connected with Melissa, obviously, is to visit the website dtcwineworkshops.com, click on the menu bar, and go over to the consultant network page. You will find her bio again here. That wraps up the introductory webinar featuring Melissa Leiter as she shared tips and tricks around winery inbound marketing. To reach out to Melissa, visit dtcwineworkshops.com and click on the consultant network page. You will find her bio there. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great day.